For those of you who uh, don't know me, I am Sheila Caldwell. I am the, uh, the president and founder of the Heart to Heart Foundation. We're a grassroots organization uh, located just south of Charlotte, North Carolina. We cover the entire state of South Carolina, the Charlotte metro area, and through our Red Heart Mamas advocacy group online. Uh, we have women who follow us all over the country. Wow. So, yeah, isn't that cool? Everywhere, just, just out of this little thing here. So the, uh, the uh, fellow there in blue, that would be Dr. Joel Kahn. If you're not familiar with him, you're going to get to know him a whole lot better. He is affectionately known as America's hot heart doctor. And, and I will tell you, um, Dr. Kahn, I've been following you on, on Facebook uh, for quite a while now. I was, I was introduced to you by uh, Victoria Dupuis of No More Broken Hearts. Oh, my God. I was thinking I have to introduce you to because you're obviously women <laughs> that are, you know, with a passion and a mission. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. wonderful. I'm glad you do know her. Now, my new title is the guy that shows up at the Red Heart Mamas in a blue <laughs> shirt because <laughs> I, I could have been prepped to be part of the color scheme, but we'll just, <laughs> you know, we, we have veins and arteries. So you're representing the arteries and I'm still so vain. As, uh, uh, I need a uh, rim shot sound effect. I really uh, do. Uh, yeah, Victoria, Victoria and I met, uh, I want to say probably 2015, 2016. We are both mutual friends of David Bobbitt. Oh, wow. Yeah, small world, right? Really? And uh, we, uh, we did one of the um, U.S. premieres. We did several of the U U.S. premieres and showings of the Widowmaker for David and Irish Heart Disease Awareness and our organizations partnered together. And uh, I met Victoria through all of that. And she became a crusader on the West Coast. I became the crusader on the East Coast. And over the years, we've gotten to know each other very, very well and have collaborated together and still working together so how about that for a small world incredible Absolutely. yeah yeah and uh so it's, it's really interesting because uh as i mentioned to you before we got started uh, i had my heart attack at age 50 about eight years ago and of course you're familiar with uh with victoria's story and i've got victoria scheduled for a live chat okay. this thursday but our focus started out very much for women, because in our community, the first thing that I realized after my heart attack was that women were all asking me the same questions, questions that having grown up in a family uh, with a lot of heart disease um, and thought I knew a lot about heart disease, the first thing I learned after my heart attack was everything I thought I knew was from a man's perspective. So we had missed symptoms for well over a year. And uh, so our focus naturally when we launched the Heart to Heart Foundation was very much focused on women, whereas Victoria naturally was very, very focused on men. So over the years, we've been able to share a lot of information back and forth. And um, as the years progressed, we realized that our focus and our mission was going to be a lot more on women and their loved ones, their entire family, because we began to see those differences. So uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Dr. Khan, let me introduce you. He is with Khan Center for Cardiac Longevity out of Bingham Farms, Michigan. And you are an integrative cardiologist now. We know about prevention, preventative cardiology, and even, um, you know, interventionalist, I'm probably saying that word wrong, um, interventive cardiology, you can correct me on this. Um, but in integrative cardiology, that's not a term we hear very much in the South. Can you tell us what an integrative cardiologist is? And just to confuse you, I wish I would have brought my props because I am an interventional cardiologist. I do know how to, I have treated thousands of people during their heart attack with an emergency catheterization and stent and since 1990. I am a preventive cardiologist, but an integrative cardiologist is usually reserved. It is not a recognized term that I'll use. I've been through formal university training. I integrate. I use prescription drugs. I use surgery. I use stents if absolutely needed. 
Mm -hmm. I use nutrition, I use sleep, I use uh, stress management and fitness, but I also do very advanced testing on blood vessels, on vitamin levels, on inflammation, on genetics, and integrate all that together so my brain literally smokes at the end of the day. <laughs> I, I don't smoke, but my brain smokes from a you know overload of you know history and nutrition and family dynamics and childhood trauma and very sophisticated labs. And I try and put it all together and knock people on the head to say, lifestyle, 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 most of this, not all of it, genetics play a factor, but, uh, and, and clearly the message is looking good on the outside is not any guarantee that you're looking good on the inside. So sort of on Victoria Dupuis platform of early testing, I, I'm the hashtag test not guess guy. Don't guess about heart disease, it's too common, particularly where you yes. are in uh, the, the region of the South. You know, get checked, don't be a victim, uh, and be very suspicious of all these symptoms that you obviously had for a year and were not mm -hmm. uh, recognized and treated appropriately. And you know, that we, we often talk about the differences between the genders, and um, in May, you know, in May, we have one week that is National Women's Health Week, which is the week after Mother's Day. June, June happens to be the entire month is National Men's Health Month. Um, I, I haven't seen a whole lot out in the media. I guess coronavirus has probably taken pr predominant uh, stage right now, but uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of talk this month about men's health. And uh, like I said before, when we started out, it was very much uh, focused on women because we realized so many women just did not know this information. Right. Right. But one of the things, one of the goals that we have is to um, help educate the men about heart health, but also the women, because as you probably already know, women may notice changes in their spouses or their significant others before they realize there's some changes in their health. Yeah, absolutely. But just so you recognize, it does take a man four weeks to learn what a woman learns in a week. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so it's not a random uh, fact that there's a week and a month uh, because you guys, you know, I've actually written articles called The Limp Response to Men's Health Month. And that's a little play on erectile yes. dysfunction. But um, guys, I tell you, they could be almost dead before they'll go see a doctor. And sometimes they are dead. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, women you know, can be in the same boat. You know, there's all there's a range in every aspect of this. But there are certain, you know, truths that appear. And women are just a little more focused on health. So just to follow up on what you said, there's, you know, everybody should pay attention. God forbid you start to feel a tightness, a pressure, a squeezing call it a balloon in the chest, a brick on the chest. Classically, rushing through the grocery store, carrying a heavy bag, climbing up the stairs, um, maybe in the cold weather, rushing to get to the work on time or get the kids to school on time, whatever the circumstances are. And it'll go away in two, three minutes if you slow down, take a breath and relax. That's been called angina pectoris or angina pectoris, and both are fine pronunciations for actually literally hundreds of years. It's an old Latin term that means choking. And men do have that more classically than women do. But if women have it, man, don't ignore it. Don't say, hey, that's a man's disease. No, if you're feeling tightness, squeezing pressure in your neck, your chest. But women may feel it in their back. Women may feel it in the jaw, the shoulders, um, rarely even in the head. Um, but being breathless. You know, yeah. why, am I, why am I at the yoga studio or the gym and I'm, you know, I'm short of breath? Why am I so tired lately? Why am I feeling, you know, fluttering and palpitations and you know, nausea? You know, why did I just work out and I'm nauseated? There can be a whole host of these subtle symptoms. And the problem is there literally can be 10 different reasons to be tired or nauseated or have a few racing heartbeats. But the fact that it could be a clue. Now, my problem with all of this is by the time you're having pressure, tightness, squeezing or back pain or palpitations or fatigue, from heart disease, we're implying your arteries are already 80, 90% blocked. Mm -hmm. And though it's certainly better to identify it at that stage before you're calling 911 in the emergency room. But let's talk about five years earlier and let's talk about teaching to women and men that this is largely a preventable disease through lifestyle, sleep, 
fitness, diet, uh, stress management, through proper testing, blood work, through you know, very simple imaging of the heart. We really, we have a mammogram. When you were 50 and had your heart attack, somebody probably, you probably had had a mammogram by that age. You never had a, never had a heart check. We have a colonoscopy and, you know, around age 45 to 50, doctors often mention it. Not everybody does it. But we don't have a heartogram, or at least we don't think we do. But in fact, as you know very well, mm -hmm. we could change the system to say, yes. we have a pandemic called heart disease. Let's institute a more aggressive program so that we both teach how to never have one. But if you have uh, starting to develop aging arteries, let's pick it up early. So we can put healthy people over in this bucket, hopefully not a Kentucky Fried Chicken bucket, but <laughs> a lower risk bucket. And we can put higher risk people over here to uh, really work on. And, you know, it costs us so much, you know, uh, stress and dollars and family distress and, mm -hmm. you know, work disruption. I mean, they're, they're really, you know, we have big hospitals because of heart disease. Uh, we would be able to shrink. You know, this, this enormous strain on the economy and the enormous strain on families, enormous strain on work, if we could, you know, really, uh, really wage a war on heart disease. But it's a battle out there. We have all the tools right now. So it is hopeful and we should never give up on it. But we got to fight. fight. I think the that's system and the food industry. We got to fight the pharmaceutical industry. You know, there's no real industry that teaches prevention. There's amazing people like you that are out there speaking from the passion and the heart. I think that's one of the reasons why I, I appreciate the way that you approach cardiovascular disease, because everything I read from you, um, it, it's very much with that prevention and that early detection and early diagnosis in mind. Because as we very often tell people, you know, if, if 80 percent of any disease if, if we stood up in a crowd and we said, look, 80 percent of all cancers are preventable or manageable all of the risk factors. I think everybody would stand up and buy that book or, or go to that webinar, or, you know, do whatever we told them to do. Uh, they would be willing to do that. But for some reason, when it comes to heart disease, we can't quite seem to get the same traction. And I think it's because it, we've, we've kind of been programmed that it's, it's the way things are. It's, you know, my, my father, my grandfather, it's my destiny. I yeah. can take some pills and it's, you know, but, but the thing we want people to hear is if 80% of a disease can be prevented or managed, uh, those risk factors, then that's hope. That means we have a chance that we could win this fight, but every year we lose over 600,000 of us to a largely preventable disease. And as you just said, that's not necessary. That's right. something we can do something about. Yeah, there's a little meme I use sometimes on social media or in lectures that if heart disease attacked your face, you'd be much more focused and caring about it. You know, I don't want anybody to be disfigured. But, you know, it is challenging. And these are three little arteries on top of the heart, deep in the chest. You can't see them. You, can, uh, you can't feel them, but they're there. And as they slowly get worse, you can go to your doctor 10 times and they'll uh, not be able to detect it unless they really have the focus that I try and teach other medical professionals. And usually it's actually the public. I got to tell patients, you're going to go to your doctor and you're going to ask for these three, four tests. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, I've never ordered those. And you no, know, maybe there's an article they can read or yeah. you be the change agent to educate them. Well, that's a very awkward position for a lot of people. Uh, we still have, you know, some uh, kind of system of authority, a little bit of it left in this country. And, you know, makes it a little awkward. But the bottom line is, you know, it's always been don't smoke, get fitness, get sleep, eat healthier than average. Don't have to be perfect. I'd rather you be perfect, but I'm not going to stress you out. But grab an apple, eat a salad, you know, eat some red peppers and put some berries on your oatmeal. And, you know, we know what bad food looks like. It's all over America and it's too cheap. And the South, uh, you know, has some of the highest, if not the highest, heart attack rates in the United States because of that. Actually, the South and my state of Michigan share the uh, infamy of the highest heart attack rates in the United States. It's not clear why in Michigan, if it's uh, all the industry, if it's some of the environmental toxins we've developed over the years. It's not clear. But anyways, so you do the basics. But then there are certain lab tests. You have to have a home blood pressure cuff or check your blood pressure. You have to get your cholesterol and your blood sugar um, and maybe an inflammation test. 
you just flashed very kindly. My latest book is on a kind of cholesterol that's genetic. Ask your doctor, this is the challenge, ask your doctor to get a special cholesterol test called lipoprotein little a. You might be the first patient who ever asks your doctor or your nurse or your VA to do that, but the science is strong. Again, you've got to be in the role of advocacy, which is awkward. And then there's that heart CT scan. You know, again, why at age 45 does a woman get told you need a mammogram and a colonoscopy? And we have people dying all over the place or having bypass or having stents or having heart attacks. And uh, nobody mentions anything about checking their heart. You know, a little stethoscope on the chest doesn't cut it. So for about a hundred bucks in most cities, you can go for a quick CT scan and, you know, you know the status. I, I celebrate people that have great heart and arteries and we do put them in a lower risk situation, but uh, we pick up so much disease and not to scare people, but to tell them, whoa, you, you got a, you got a, like a gift here. you got a problem, but you, you found out before all the other people that found out with death or found out with bypass or found out with emergency and stents. And you've got an opportunity because heart disease is reversible. And I'm sure you've mentioned that in other interviews. If you will quit the smoking, start the walking, eat the salads, you know, get some sleep, stop pounding on walls when you're really ticked off and learn how to breathe a little. And, you know, and kind of consistently say, life's precious and I will take good care of this special body. You only get one of them, as far as we know, uh, and all, you know, you have a great chance to actually start to improve some of this. So there's great hope in heart disease, but just got to institute earlier, you know, care and appreciation and the fact it's slow from the time we're teenagers, it's slowly starting to build up, you know, every biscuit, every bacon, every cheese omelet, every malt, every Coca-Cola, every cigarette, slowly, 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 like rings on a tree until why did I have a heart attack? Well, what were you eating when you were 17, bud? You know, what'd you, you know, what'd you eat in the service? And mom, I'm sorry, but why did you drive the kids through, you know, Wendy's and McDonald's when you're on the way to soccer? I get it. You were stressed and it's, you know, it's subsidized by the government, so it's not expensive, but you know, you pay the price. A lot of us do for those years of kind of a quick uh, and somewhat, I don't want to say thoughtless, but not mindful kind of decisions. So, no. You are absolutely right, of no. course. And one of the things that um, I, re I I noticed a couple of years ago, I think with, um, I want to say on your Facebook page, you, maybe even the last year, you really began focusing on a lot of men's unique issues. And for the women who are watching, the men may already be aware of this, but for the women who are watching, I know whenever we go out and we do any community education about heart disease prevention, and we're talking about the coronary artery calcium scans and the other labs that they need to consider um, getting, one of the things that really surprises people, and again, this all goes back to that basic education, is that we typically see heart disease in men by the time they're in their early to mid 40s, and there might be some other signs there that there might right. be some heart disease issues. And I don't know that people have a lot of conversations. I know being a Southern woman, we're not necessarily assertive when we go into the doctor's office. And, yeah. and when the doctor says, do you have any questions for me? We all just kind of freeze up and forget every question yeah. we thought about when we were waiting in the waiting room. But things for men like the uh, erectile dysfunction, the testosterone, the sleep apnea, the things that we may see changes in our spouses or significant others to go, you know, this could be, we need to get your heart checked. We need to take this yeah. a step further and, and not kind of accept that this is normal aging. When, right. when do we need to step in and make those suggestions and how? Right, and since we're kind of focusing on men's health in this conversation, we don't want to leave women out, and I know that you've done such a great job focusing on that. But, you know, you mentioned erectile dysfunction, awkward conversation, awkward on Facebook, awkward, you know, to bring up. But, you know, the statistics are just amazing. About 40% of men at age 40, 50% of men at age 50, 60% of men at age 60. This becomes a pretty serious issue. I mean, depending on the relationship and the genders and all, but usually it's a woman that's going to be aware that their man or a man is having issues. Um, 
you know, there can always be a little too much alcohol or a little too big a meal or relationship problems. But very often it's blood flow, it's vascular. And the science, and that's the thing, you and I aren't hitting on something here that, to make, you know, bold headline. The science has been out for a good 20 years mm -hmm. that you take a man who had a heart attack and you ask him a, a full health history, very often three to four years before their heart attack, erectile dysfunction started to become a pretty serious issue in their life and their relationship. Maybe they went to their primary care doc and got a prescription for Viagra, Levitra, Cialis. But the, the nexus, the connection between that problem and future heart disease risk was not brought up. You know, Joe, your cholesterol is too high. Bob, your blood pressure is crazy. You know, Steve, you're never exercising. And Dave, you got to quit smoking. And, you know, and you're going to have a heart attack if you don't give up. That erectile dysfunction could have been, as it's called, a canary in the coal mine, an early canary in the coal mine, an early warning system. Um, that's been in the medical literature, urology literature, cardiology literature, guideline statements. But in medical practice, it's just easier to say, here's your Viagra, you know, Bob, and I'll see you in six months. And we're missing out on an opportunity. So it may take a vocal spouse, a vocal significant other, you know, to say, you be sure you tell Dr. You know, Dr. Jones about that problem you have, or even go to a doctor's appointment with your man. Uh, if stuff is very easy to read about. I wrote a whole book about it called Vegan Sex, the little plant-based orientation. You can ignore that part, but the chapters on all this, I've written many articles, because the science is strong. It's just another lost opportunity, but you're teaching and I'm teaching. Don't miss the opportunity. You know, a man 40 years old shouldn't be having those problems. And it could be relationship and it could be glandular, endocrine, thyroid, testosterone. You know, you ride your bike 100 miles a day, you can actually do some damage just based on all that pressure. Most of the time, it's a sick blood vessel giving a clue that other sick blood vessels are gonna start to you know, erupt like volcanoes and that's called a stroke or a heart attack or just dropping dead. So, you know, uh, I say it goes rotten below the belt before it goes rotten above the belt. And that is the typical sequence. So, uh, you know, it's a great message to teach in public. And it's an important discussion, even though it seems a little awkward. I mean, I know detailed sex histories on every one of my male patients. I don't usually go in depth in my female patients, just that still remains a little awkward. And the science isn't as strong either, but you want to be frisky, you better, you know, eat well, exercise, quit smoking, and get these thorough checkups like the calcium score and the blood work you teach. Absolutely, and, and it's really surprising because I know, uh, you know, you'll watch television or you'll be listening to the radio and you'll hear these very comedic commercials about snoring. Yeah. And my natural inclination now is I'm yelling at the radio going, no, 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 sleep study. Don't, don't buy the device, go get a sleep right. study. And then if that turns out okay, go get your device. But you know, the, the, these are all things that we don't necessarily um, know to talk about. And the thing that we learned very early on is there, even today, there is probably about half the people out there that a lot of things you and I are talking about, they haven't heard. And that's scary, you know, that the information is there, it's been out there, but when they go see their doctors, it's not something, and I understand today's healthcare, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, we're all victims of the healthcare system right now. Yeah. The yeah. doctors can't practice the way that they want to practice. We can't, you know, we don't feel like we can assert ourselves. It, 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 it's really a catch 22, which is why you and I are doing this, this conversation so that people know to have these conversations with their doctor when they see something. But uh, there, there's so many things, and, and I do want to talk about your, your book. I'm going to hold it up here. Um, I, I have lots of highlighted areas in here because uh, another connection that you and I have is our friend Bob Harper. Wow. <laughs> I, uh, I, I would love to call him a friend. He's a rather private individual. Do you yes. know him? Yes. 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 Oh, wow. Um, nice. Yeah, I, I am one of the um, AstraZeneca survivors, have heart ambassadors with Bob. Wow, isn't that Small special? world. And so um, several years ago, I honestly, you know, I, I've been on this journey. Like I said, I've learned a lot in eight years. But I did not know that much about lipoprotein little a yeah. until a friend of mine 
who I'm telling you, healthy, healthy man, mid 40s, worked out. I mean, everything on the surface, all of his numbers, everything about him was healthy. Um, and he's on a riding lawnmower and he drops off because he's had a heart attack. Nobody could figure out why. I mean, this was like yeah. the talk of the community. People were calling me, did you hear about so-and-so? And we're all, and of course I'm asking all the normal questions, you know, what was his, you know, his physical like, and did he, you know, did he have a stress to, all of the things, he had passed it. And um, had a clean bill of health, was a healthy man in his mid forties. And he took the time to really do uh, a lot of exhaustive labs and testing. He spent the money out of his pocket to do it, to get the answers. And what it came back to was, life for protein little a yeah of course so that's interesting and yeah just in case anybody doesn't recognize maybe you've talked before but bob harper another example biggest loser trainer yeah. with jillian michaels ripped 51 years old super healthy diet most of the time and he's on a treadmill in new york city running at a mm -hmm. gym and he has a cardiac arrest and literally would have been dead in 10 minutes but there's a defibrillator at the gym and a cardiologist working out and they bring him back he was sick and on death's door for a few weeks, but he's recovered. And he announced a few months later in 2017 on the Dr. Oz show, whoa, you know, I thought I was healthy. I had all the tests. I've turned out I've inherited a strange but widely common form of cholesterol that nobody ever checked on me. And it was also lipoprotein little a. It's an awkward word. LP little a is another way, but very quickly, one out of every four people get a gift from their parents, you sort of wish you didn't get, called lipoprotein little a. So from age six months, one year, 18 months, you always have a high level of a kind of cholesterol. It never shows up on your routine blood work. You just gotta ask your doc another difficult chore to convince your doctor to check a lab test they may never have drawn. But this has been known uh, starting in 1963, but really the last 10 years that you may carry through most of your teen life, young adult life, mid adult life, a kind of cholesterol that can clog up your brain arteries, your heart arteries, even one of your heart valves. One out of every seven operations on the aortic valve, a very big common operation, is due to lipoprotein little a destroying the heart valve. But nobody checks it. And I'm not blaming, I'm not a blamer, that we're not doing enough of this proactive testing, because it's not just the patients. It's the doctors aren't learning much about it, which is why I decided to write a book about it because it's massive science. And for about 25 bucks for a blood test, you can be sure mom and dad didn't give you a little surprise so you're not on your riding mower one day without a clue that you carry a little bit of extra risk. And right now it's not clear what you do if you're sky high. I have a whole practice full of people all over the United States that I take care of that have sky high inherited cholesterol levels. But we know for sure, eat better, move more, sleep better, don't smoke, get all your other numbers intact. And there will be a new pharmaceutical therapies coming very soon uh, because this has really become the center of a lot of attention. A lot of it due to Bob Harper and some articles in the New York Times a couple of years ago. They have a, a whole organization now, I know, yeah. that's, that's dedicated to that. And interestingly enough, when, when he discovered this, his father, uh, went to be tested. His dad had it. His siblings had it. And, yeah, his they have to. Yeah. and his children had it. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. And not Bob, the, my friend that was oh, your here. Friend. Yeah, friend yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about Bob's family. I didn't yeah. ask him about that. One of your parents has to have One it. One of the parents has to have it. And if you want to feel really lowly, there's only like three animals on the planet that can make this kind of cholesterol. Humans, some of the primates, and the lowly hedgehog. So if, you're, if you need a little chuckle now and then and you see a hedgehog, we do have something in common with them, which is the ability to produce. Yeah. One out of every four people is you know, 1.4 billion people worldwide. That's a, a really common problem that will become much more talked about, and you're doing a good job bringing it up. Thank you. Uh, absolutely, because one of the things that we discovered, you know, and, and one of the reasons why... Um, I want to make sure that we're educating the men, you know, um, and, and I know he doesn't mind me sharing this, but my, uh, my husband, Bill, because we've shared his story before, um, he's 12 years my senior, and uh, it was always kind of our, our joke between us that I'm the heart attack survivor, he was going to long outlive me, 
Um, and then when he turned 60, his uh, testosterone took a dive. I mean, a serious wow. dive. He right. developed type 2 diabetes. I mean, it's like everything went off the choo-choo tracks. He had no family history of heart disease on either side of his family. Had always, you know, his numbers were good. If you looked at him on paper, all of the risk factors were under control. He was doing all of the right things. Um, when we began doing the teaching on calcium uh, scoring with, uh, with David Bobbitt to show support, he goes in and he has the calcium scan done because he's like, hey, I'm supporting my wife. She's, you know, right. we practice what we preach. And uh, he came out with a score over 700 and we were shocked right. because everything else on paper when we looked at his basic biometrics, uh, you know, uh, yeah, really surprised. He passed his exercise treadmill stress test and right. his EKG was good. Right. Great, right? Score over 700. Had it not been for that scan, and this was three, well, the scan was in 2015, I believe. Uh, within 18 months, though, uh, the wheels came off again still, even with diet, exercise, you know, you tried to do everything you can, you're on a statin, but it was at that point that they decided they needed to do an intervention, and to make a long story really short, uh, they could not stand him, so he wound up having a triple bypass. Wow. This was three years ago within wow. the next week, and, um, but the one question that we had was, and he asked his doctor, let's check the lipoprotein little a. Interestingly enough, his was elevated. And I know years ago when I was really trying to embrace, you know, prevention because I knew about my family history, right. I had asked a doctor for lipoprotein little a scan. And I was told, and you're going to chuckle when I say this, um, I was told by that physician, well, we really don't do those because even if you have it, there's nothing you can do about it. So there's really no point. That hasn't changed much. It's a very sad conventional approach. Just in 2019, the European Society of Atherosclerosis of Cardiology finally recommended, we think everybody should get it done once in life, maybe early in life, give them a little heads up. Even if it's just more lifestyle, less donuts, that's a good message to know early in life. Uh, the American Heart Association right now only says if you're in a high-risk family, we're talking about a $30 blood test. I mean, this is not a challenging issue, but anybody that wants to get one, they can arrange to their doctor or even through some of these independent labs. And the future is very bright for this problem. I will say, like you said, I mean, Victoria Dupuy has a tragic death of her husband, sets up a foundation. You have an unexpected health challenge of a major import. Uh, the woman who set up the Lipoprotein A Foundation, which is a wonderful organization, she also had a cardiac event in her 30s and found out mm -hmm. Lipoprotein A. It's amazing what you ladies are doing. And, you know, we're a bunch of <laughs> sloggers. We, you know, we go, we in the medical community go to steakhouses to learn about new pharmaceuticals. And there's some value there, of course. But we're not changing the world like you are. So, uh, yay for women. Yay. Well, you know, and you guys kind of have your hands full. So, um, you know, we, we do what we can. We, we uh, the Heart to Heart Foundation, I want to make sure folks know, we are affiliated with Quest Labs. And I put it oh, down right. in the chat box wow. so uh, we can actually refer people over to get those screenings, the lipoprotein, yeah. little they a, the C-reactive everything. protein. Yeah. yeah. And it's and it's cheap. I mean, it's really yeah. inexpensive. And uh, we, we have a lot of folks on our team that can do some of the coaching on that and teach them what questions to go back to their doctor with and, and how to follow up on that. I want to make sure that everybody knows, and I'm going to put this, I'm running let me come over here. Um, I'm going to put the link to uh, Dr. Khan's book in the Zoom chat as well. And I'll also post all of this over on Facebook when cool. we're done um, because we, we've been promoting it uh, through our Amazon, our Smile Amazon account to make sure that wow. people have that on our website. And if you want to learn more about uh, Dr. Khan's practice, I love the fact that you you have a um, a restaurant which i think is really cool so you not only teach the plant-based lifestyle you you get to introduce people to it we try we try we try the restaurant business is everybody knows is a challenging business the last three months have been mm -hmm. you know 
unlike any other, but uh, we're back open and serving healthy food. And yeah, it's a little lab to uh, teach what I preach. And uh, it's a little business with my son. We both have other things we do, but it's a nice place. Yeah, and you know, you've got options in the South more than we did 10 years ago, but mm -hmm. we're still challenged. The most popular uh, plant restaurant in the South is in Atlanta, but it's all fried food and wouldn't <laughs> really make wouldn't really make uh, you know the heart to heart foundation preferred food choices. Yeah, yeah it, in the south, uh, our vegetable plate includes things like mac and cheese. You know yeah. that that's a vegetable, its own food group. And uh, one of our um, our cardiologists on our medical board of advisors, he he often shares that when he came to this market thirty years ago and realized that the dessert menu. I believe had fried Twinkies. He knew he was yeah. needed here. So <laughs> you'll find them at the hospital cafeteria in 2020. Ah, oh boy. Not, not much has changed. I'll just give you one last anecdote. Although I'm from Detroit, I did my medical training in Dallas for three years in Kansas city for a year. That's learned to do angioplasty and stenting. And I was already a plant-based, I had adopted a plant-based diet in undergrad just for fun. Ann Arbor was a very funky town. It was not that rare. I ate, only okra for three years in Dallas. It was the only vegetable that was always in the hospital cafeteria, always at Luby's cafeteria. I ate, I can't eat okra anymore. I mean, it was three years or nothing but okra. I never saw a fried Twinkie. Uh, I wouldn't have eaten that back then anyways, but uh, shout out to Southern cooking. Uh, brings on a lot of heart disease, erectile dysfunction, and probably cancer uh, and dementia. Yes, and unfortunately it does. Now, what you might be excited to hear is that here in Rock Hill, of all places, we have one of the only um, intensive cardiac rehabilitation really? programs with Dr. Dean Ornish. Yes. That is you know, the man, my friend, the mentor, and yes. that... You know, when people ask about this, oh, I hear about paleo and I hear about the keto and I hear about Mediterranean. I mean, our insurance health system, which is such a tightwad when it comes to prevention, has only permitted payment for two heart disease prevention programs after a heart attack to reverse the existing disease. One is called the Ornish program. You have one is the Pritikin program. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is no, you know, fried food, fried Twinkie, ketogenic heart disease reversal program anywhere, let alone one that's paid for by insurance. So go, go. That's absolutely fantastic resource. In the state of Michigan, we just got our first Ornish program in a small community and one Pritikin program in Ann Arbor. And, you know, we've got 11 million citizens that never hear about nutrition is a path to better, you know, health in general and certainly for heart health. So, wow, I'm impressed. Yeah, so Carolina Cardiology, give them a shout out. That's yeah. uh, what, that's uh, one of our, our what we call uh, our companies with heart champions. Yeah, and, that's a good that's a good yeah. practice. I know that practice. Ah, yeah. oh, very good. I, I will pass that along. Yeah. And uh, so, closing question. I, I didn't see. I saw some questions regarding coronary calcium scans, which here in our area they are also our partner for uh, coronary calcium scans. So I'll make sure, sure there's people in the chat get that information. Uh, we believe in it so much, we even have scholarships for women who can't afford the fee to get the scans done. So that, that's how much we believe in it. But uh, I'll make sure I post that. So if you had one thing that you want people to know, you know, about um, how to live heart healthy, how to uh, prevent heart disease. If, if you, that, that little elevator speech that you have, what is that one thing you want people to know? Yeah. And, and I would say, and you just said the word, I mean, most of the diseases that rob us of quality and quantity of life that, you know, as we're getting ill, we wished and we pray that they'd go away. They are preventable. You will not hear that in the doctor's office. You can prevent your chance of developing type 2 diabetes and all the problems. You can prevent, if you had known uh, at age 40 that 10 years from now you're going to have a heart attack and that it was preventable, you would have had the option to decide to make changes. If you knew you were going to have breast cancer from a deep southern fried diet five years from now and you had the chance, and all of these are supported by science, that you can you know, you do not need a doctor to prevent most of the illnesses that rob us of quantity and quality of life. Be mindful. Take care. Every meal matters. 
and the education is available and that your foundation is such a great path. And you don't have to be perfect, but don't fall into the trap that the answer is surgery, prescription drugs, and procedures as exclusive uh, way to deal with advanced disease. You know, prevent not stent is actually the trademark I own because I believe so strongly in it. So mindfulness, awareness, prevention is real. It's uh, it's important. And, you know, I don't think people on their deathbed dying of these diseases would say, I'm so glad I did burgers, fries, malts, and sat in front of the TV. It was worth it to get chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. No, you would have made the changes if you know. So you're teaching it, I'm teaching it. The science is strong. And just um, slap yourself awake. Don't be, you know, we're all in this country rather, um, uh, you know, Im immune and dull to the idea that, you know, starting in childhood and young adulthood and right now, right now, what you do for dinner, what tomorrow you do for breakfast and whether you go to the gym and how well you sleep tonight, it matters and it matters and just don't wait till you're in poor health. Thank you for all that. That was a long do. elevator. We went to no. the 40th floor. That is fine. That is exactly what I think people need to hear because I think to some degree, they think it just can't be that easy. No, it's a uh, body is a miracle. And mm -hmm. even if you get it in a bad stitch with diabetes and heart disease and some forms of cancer, like men's prostate cancer, even at that stage, the science says you can reverse that disease. But don't wait, you know, do it so you are free, or at least the odds are very high you'll be free of these problems. So, there's a famous statement. A person with good health has a thousand dreams in life. A person with poor health has only one dream. So how do you get it back? Don't wait. Amen to that. Well, thank you so much again. Guys, go over to our website. There's a link in the chat box. I'll put it on Facebook. Thank get you. this book. In addition to really great information about lipoprotein little A, which I know whenever I bring this up, whenever I'm speaking, they all go, what? Um, a lot of great information in here about lipoprotein little a we'd be happy to talk with you about helping you set up to go and get those labs done but there's also dr Khan, some Good. fabulous recipes in here Thank you. oh my gosh i i you know because we we follow i won't say we're perfect at it uh but pretty much a plant-based diet most days of the week you know, um, and that's something that we, we just Good. have to really work on. Uh, but I will tell you, that's always probably the biggest challenge for most people is yeah. what do you make? You know, and we're not taught to cook this way and to prepare foods this way, especially in the South. Uh, but there's some great recipes in here. So, you. you know, the, the education you're going to get, the recipes you're going to get, it's just fabulous information. But thank you for writing this book. It's very, very timely because thank you. as we both know, a lot of people don't know that a lot about this subject. Thank you for all you do, really, from the heart. It's amazing. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, with that, I, I will sign off. But thank you guys for joining us on Facebook and on Zoom. We appreciate it. We'll be posting this over on our um, on our YouTube channel. So if uh, if you want to watch the replay, feel free to see it over there. Thanks, Dr. Khan. See you again bye soon. Bye-bye. Good evening. Bye-bye.